All right, the next portion of the service you can just endure. <laughs> I tell you, I am so thankful that we have people that are helpers. Yeah. That's what I am as a helper, all right? Yeah. And uh, we've had some great speakers and uh, lots of music and lots of singing and uh, different ones doing their parts, and God still brings things together and makes it whole. Amen? Yeah. And uh, we trust in the Lord that He is making you whole in your heart, soul, body, amen, yeah. mind, yeah. hallelujah. You have already looked in your bulletin and you know the title of this message this morning and we could just call it uh, a little uh, tiny one, all right? We leave the big messages up to pastor, the deep messages up to pastor, and all I do is get in my little rowboat and do a little uh, jot across the water, what do you say? Amen? Amen. And uh, I just I just want to be look, looked at as a helper. Is that all right? Yeah. That's, all, that's all you are, is a helper in, in, in God's kingdom. Yeah. And it is important that you're willing to be that helper. Amen? And, and God's just blessing, and we're having a great time. Uh, Pastor, uh, I know you miss him. We miss him. All of us miss him when he's gone, but... I'll tell you something, as long as you're flesh and blood, I'll guarantee you, you need some time off. Amen, Stan? Amen. And worked very hard with the, the, with the singing group and Rob. They come uh, every week, practice, is just uh, putting things together. And I'll tell you something, they do such a fabulous job. And the rest of you do a good job in all of your positions, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, God has been... Uh, Speaking to my heart this past week, Pastor wanted me to take care of this, and so God has uh, impressed upon me the word of uh, conviction, and what does conviction mean? And, and every one of us, whether you're old in the Lord or brand new, every one of us should be thankful for conviction. Amen? Yeah. And uh, there comes a time in life where a conviction might rub you the wrong way. Ooh. Well, I'll go over here on this side. <laughs> Sometimes conviction might rub you the wrong way. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They see. Uh, conviction is another way of saying a reproof. And uh, all of us need to uh, come to a place in life where conviction will settle in your spirit, in your heart, amen, amen, and in your mind so that you know how to separate the word of truth and be led by the Holy Spirit, amen? amen. Because how many of us want to be led into the spirit of truth? Amen. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. He leads you into all truth and he will help you every step of the way. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you, but he'll be right there as long as you call out to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a lot of things going on in the world today, and I'll guarantee you, this is the time where you need to pay attention to a lot of things that's taking place. Amen? Yeah. You need to, uh, huh, I'll tell you, this is a time and an hour where the church should be praying. Yeah. Amen? I'm talking about the true church. There is a, there's a, a, a counterfeit for everything that's real. Right. And uh, anything that's counterfeit is not of God. Hello? Yeah. And so we need to uh, always remember that God wants to be put where he belongs in your heart, in your life, every day. Amen? Not just on Sunday. Well, here I got to go over here again. You know, I mean, not just on Sunday when you just take a notion to come to church. How many is thankful that the Holy Spirit will lead you to church for not only just the fellowship, but we need to deep, dig deep into our own hearts and into the Word of God so that we know what conviction is on our heart and on our lives. Amen? God, what are you telling me today? What do you want me to do? What is it, Lord? Oh, 
No, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Let me tell you, God has a direction that he's going. Amen? And you're not going to stop him, and I'm not going to stop him, and the world is not going to stop him. God is in control yeah. of everything and all aspects yeah. of your life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And he wants to bring a, a convicting power upon your soul so that you acknowledge the fact that he is touching your life. Oh, yeah. How many likes, how many just thrilled that God touches your life? Amen? Yes. Yeah. Here we go. John, John chapter 16. Let's read our text. And when he has when he has come, he will reprove, convict, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful this morning that our ears are bowed to you. Yes. And Lord, that our hearts are bowed. Yes. And our heads are bowed, O oh God, to a living God. Hallelujah. Amen. That brings conviction and reproof in our sinful lives and also of righteousness mm -hmm. and then of judgment. Lord, we pray, God, that you would minister to all of our hearts. Open our hearts and our minds, O oh God, that we can reach up to you as you reach down to us. Your arm is not shortened this morning that you cannot reach down to us and your ear is not too heavy that you cannot hear us. Lord, as we uh, lift you up, as we look at your word, we pray that our hearts are open to receive. Mm -hmm. And we ask it all in the precious holy name of Jesus. And everyone says amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. What is conviction? I will answer that right away. It is awakening to consciousness of guilt and the need of forgiveness. Amen? Amen. And there comes a time in life that all of us recognize the fact that we're guilty. Amen? Amen. There's no one here this morning that has not been guilty or guilty of sin in some fashion. Amen? Amen. And so... We're thankful that God is a just God, amen? amen? And he is willing to forgive us of all sin. I want to uh, move up to verse 7, and we'll read a few verses here. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, speaking to his disciples. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he comes, he he and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Look at verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of, of truth, is come, he will guide you into tr all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. How many, yeah. how many wants to be shown yeah. things to come? Yeah. How, many, how many believes that God will help you rightly divide the word of truth? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And you need to talk to God about your convictions, amen, not your neighbors. Ooh. Oh, you didn't have to say that. I'm just the perfect guy, you know. You, I tell, I tried to convince Kay that I've been born with my halo. But I'll tell you something. There ain't nobody here. Richard, now. I've always tried to convince him that I've had a halo. But I'll tell you something. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we want to be led into the truth. But the only way that you could be led into the truth is you, you submit Amen? Amen. And that's the hardest thing for people to do. To submit. Hello? Amen. Submit and commit your heart to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Make room for God. We live it in a day and time where a lot of people doesn't don't want anything to do with the gospel. No. Only if it 
rubs them the right way. Right. Hello? Yeah. Or if you conform to their ideas. But I believe that we're living in a day and time now where the church is going to have to come to a place where they, the church, all of us, the believers, amen, the ones that believe that Jesus is Lord above all, amen. that's going to have to come to the place where that they are seeking the Lord for outpouring of His Spirit on the world. Amen? Amen. The world needs God. Amen. And we can see uh, on the news, different news, and I'm not here to preach uh, any kind or teach any kind of uh, news uh, that you're watching or you are, you are not watching. I'll tell you something, the best news you can get is right here yeah. in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, this is the best word. The best news that you can get, and it will help you come to the truth of what's going to take place yet to come. Amen? Amen. Mm -mm. <laughs> Verse 8 talks about reproof or convict or our convictions. You know, a lot of times, you know, Sometimes it's so easy to see somebody else's faults rather than to see our own. Yeah. But how many believes that we need to live just as close to the Lord so that other people see Jesus? Right. Right. Amen? Yeah. And the way that you live close to the Lord is shun the all the appearance of evil right. and read his word and ponder it in your heart, it in your mind. Amen? Talk it all day long. Amen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get close to God. The world is in trouble, folks. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you, the world is in trouble. We look to, we, we, we should always look to God for everything and we look to His Word and we find out on, on the programs, the news program, different things that things are taking place in the, in the Middle East. We look at Israel. We are praying for Israel. I hope you are. Amen. How many believes you need to pray for Israel? Amen. Amen. That's Amen. God's people. That's God's city. Hello? Amen. And we need to pray for them. But outside of just the Middle East, we're having a, a, a heyday. The, 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 the world is having a heyday in disbelief of God. As I mentioned once before, uh, a few weeks ago, that we're living in a day and time when men don't know if they want to be men or women don't, want to, don't know if they want to be women. And I'm going to tell you something. God has made man and woman. Hello? Amen. And God wants us to recognize the fact that he is in control of you. And he wants you to recognize whenever conviction grips your heart. Hello? And he wants to reprove you. He wants to sift the church. He wants to find out if you're really standing for him. Yeah. I'll tell you something. You may, go through, you may go through some personal problems. God's trying to get your attention. He's laid a a. a, a a conviction on you and he's touched you and ministered to you in times past and he's laid something on your heart and you just kind of put it on the back shelf. <clears throat> and you decide, well, I'll take care of that later. Maybe it's just a very personal situation that you don't you don't want to expose it. How many knows that God can expose anything? He, hello? And he wants you to line up with the word so that he can minister to you and help you in that conviction. And he wants to bring his righteousness. How many believes that it's God's righteousness in you that makes everything perfect? He is the God of perfection. And in the end, hallelujah, woo! In the end, you'll be perfected and you'll be like him. Hallelujah. That is our hope this morning is that we can be just like Jesus. Yes. Amen. Verse 13 says, How be it 
when he, the spirit of truth, is to come. He will guide you into all truth. You know, thank God for the church. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the church that's going to bring you to your knees. Amen. Hello? It's God. It's God working in your heart, in your life, every day, morning, night, and noon. Amen? That will bring us to our knees because of the conviction that comes from Him. Amen. To show us. The Spirit's ministry of convicting operates in three areas. Sin. Amen? Righteousness. And judgment. And I said, when I started out, I've got lots of notes, and I was going to make this little. <laughs> and let, God, uh, let uh, Pastor take care of the big ones, okay? And my sister, bless her heart, she come and said she may have to leave a little bit early. We'll pray for her soul. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I love her dearly. Uh, anyway, God, God will help her. God will help you. Amen. He will deal with sin. The Holy Spirit exposes and reproves sin and unbelief in order to awake our consciousness of guilt and the need of forgiveness. Conviction also makes clear the fearful results of the guilty persistent in the wrongdoing. Oh, Charlie, don't talk about wrongdoing. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. All is guilty. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all is guilty of sin. And I'll tell you something. A lot of Christians are guilty of a lot of sin and because they haven't went to God, for the conviction that God's laid upon their heart. After a while, you you resist conviction. I just step away from here just a little bit. You you I'm trying to be careful. You uh, you resist conviction in your life. You're doing something that God has already told you to quit doing, or stop doing, or don't do this, or don't do the other. And you have brushed it off. You don't want nothing to do with it. And then he comes back because he's full of grace. Amen? And long-suffering. And he wants to help you in every area of life. Amen? So he continues to come to you with a conviction that is laid upon your heart. And pretty soon, if you don't yield to that conviction, he will ease off and he will let you have your own way to a certain extent. And you will wish you never had that. Hello? Come on. After conviction, a choice must be made. This will often lead to true repentance. Amen? Amen. And turning to Jesus as Lord and Savior. God help us to turn to Him. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of things in all of our lives that we, we wrestle with. All of us have difficulties. I, I haven't proven to you any, any halos over mine or your head either one. But I'm going to tell you something. God wants to deal with your heart, amen, and bring you from a, a captivity of whatever is bothering you to come near to the Lord in devotional, in reading the Word of God, in praying for your brothers and your sisters. You know, we have so much going on throughout the week in our lives that God wants to get our attention. For one thing, the world is in bad shape. Like I said it before, the world's in bad shape. What are you doing about it as the church, as a believer? What are you doing? Are you praying? Are you seeking God? All of us know, we, I don't think anyone here doesn't know that elections are coming up, not long. And I'll tell you, if we don't vote for the right, for the right person, hello, and I'm not getting into politics, 
But I'll tell you something. There's something about voting for the right person. Yes. Listen to what's being said. Amen. Be careful. I have to be very, very careful. I don't get politics mixed up. I get that so upset sometimes. <laughs> Righteousness, the spirit of con convincing people that Jesus is the righteous Son of God. Resurrected, vi uh, vindicated, and now the Lord of all. He makes them aware of God's standards of righteousness in Christ. He shows them what is sin and gives them power to overcome the world. And then the third, the second one is judgment. The spirit, uh, the third one, the, the spirit convinces people of Satan's defeat at the cross. How many is thankful that Jesus paid it all? Amen. Went to the cross for you and for me. Sins have been blotted out. Amen. And the future of judgment is the eternal is the uh, in, in turn of human race. The spirit works of convincing people of sin, righteousness, and judgment will be manifested in all who are baptized. In the spirit and sh and uh, full of the spirit uh, of believer, the believers full of the spirit. John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit from birth, minded uh, exposed the sin of the Jews, Jewish people, and uh, commanded them to change their ways. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, sinners and uh, uh, and called them to repent and receive forgiveness. The word of God is still the same. Amen? Amen. He's calling sinners, calling people, calling the church. Amen? He's calling them to be reproved, <coughs> touching their lives. In the 13th verse, it talks about uh, the Lord never overwhelms his disciples with teaching. He never did overwhelm his disciples with teaching. He will never overwhelm you. He give he gave it to the uh, to them. And the way that he gave it to them is line upon line, <coughs> precept upon precept. Amen? Amen. He never I'll tell you something, if I had one some of you ranchers out there, you got one cow. No? You got one cow and you're gonna go out there and you're gonna feed that whole bale of hay to one cow at one time. He won't eat the whole bale of hay. But you give him in portions. Amen? And that's what God wants to do to the church. He wants to give it to you in portions so that you can digest and let the Holy Spirit bless your heart and minister to you and teach you from day to day. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You say, well, I walk with the Lord. I do this and I do that and I do the other. God wants us to be changed. Amen? Oh, come on, Charlie. <laughs> he does. He wants us to be a changed person. There comes a time in a Christian's life that we got to grow up. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And stand up and stand for the right and stand for those things which are godly. And be blessed of the Lord. Yeah. presence of the Holy Spirit also convicts the world of a coming judgment. And there will be a judgment. He hello? Yes. And of there, uh, a, a conviction of righteousness and Jesus' righteousness and of judgment. Satan was judged at Calvary. Hello? Yeah. And all who follow him likewise are judged. The prince of the Holy Spirit also convicts the world of the coming judgment. Friend, God brings conviction. It's not your neighbor. Hello? Work out your own salvation with fear and tremble before the Lord. Hello? You know whether you're 
answering the call of your heart when God begins to move. You know, ever born again believer, and I won't do like pastor. This is the second time, third time. I'm closing. I like to pick on him a little bit. But in closing, I want to make this statement. Every born again believer must be thankful for conviction that God brings to you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to say it one more time. Every born again believer must be thankful for the convictions that God brings to you. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. I want, I want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to be directed by the Holy Spirit. I want to know what convictions God wants to lay in on my heart. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe that if you are sincere, if you're sincere before God, that God will minister to you and help you on Monday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I believe that you can come back to church on Sunday worshiping God. Amen? Amen. Lifting your hands up. We're together again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Judy, can you come to the piano? Where's Judy? Where's Judy? There you are. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. I want Judy just to play a, a tune, and I want to talk to you just for a moment. Would you bow your heads with me? I'm not asking you to answer a question this morning if God's brought a conviction on you. That's your business. I am saying that you need to be obedient to God. Amen. God knows your heart. He knows your heart better than you do. Is there something that God has spoken to you about in the past and you've just kind of brushed it aside? Are you living a life that shines out and portrays Christ? Or is there something in, in your life that you need to maybe lay aside and say, I just don't need that anymore. I just don't want to do that anymore. Is there something that maybe is causing you to have problems getting where you need to be in God? Think about it just for a moment. Open up your heart and ask God to check your soul. Check your heart. He said, let this mind be in you, the mind of Christ. Count it not robbery to have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants to speak to you this morning. Mm -hmm. You say, Charlie, this is not for me. It's, it's just too hard. If you submit to the Lord and commit to him, he'll make things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. He will help you lay aside some stumbling things is there something in your life that really may not be a real good testimony toward your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your children? Is there something that you can correct because God is helping you? He said he would guide you. His Holy Spirit would guide you into all truth. Every head bowed, no one's looking around. Would you just slip your hand up and say, Charlie? Pray for me, would you? Just pray for me. Yes, I see that hand. That hand. Any others? Pray for me that God will help me release this situation. We're not going to ask you to come up forward. We're going to believe God. We're going to pray together. Amen? Yes. Yes. That hand. Any others? Yes. Amen. That one. 
something in your life that you want God to take full control of. Yes, I see that hand. God wants, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, I see that hand. God's able, folks. Church, God wants to do a great work in your life. He wants to help you. He wants to get that situation removed. He wants you to call out to him. Thank you, Jesus. Would you stand with me this morning as we pray and be dismissed? I want us to pray, all of us together, I want us to pray for those uplifted hands. God's seen every hand that was lifted this morning. Let's believe God for all these. And maybe you wasn't, you just really didn't want to lift your hand, but your heart was lifted to God. And you want help. Let's believe God together. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we know that you're on the throne this morning and you've seen every hand that was lifted. Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to convict all of us and those that lifted their hand and they're dealing with whatever it might be. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release this. This situation, this burden, whatever it might be. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that needs to find you, needs to come to you, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to their heart right now. Right now, through your Holy Spirit, draw them, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We lift up your holy name. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God good to you. Amen. All the time. Amen. Well, I'll tell you something. When you leave this morning, take Jesus with you everywhere you go. Amen. Let's sing it together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. I belong in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join hands with Jesus as we travel this song. I'm so glad I'm.